Uh, we are going to continue our series on missing the point. And today, very appropriately, we're going to be talking about missing the point about gifts. About gifts. And there's a scripture passage we're going to read from Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. You might want to say, a gift has been given to you. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. This is the Word of God. A wonderful story. So we're going to talk today about missing the point about gifts. And I don't know, I want to say a word to the wives here. I don't know if you realize what a stressful time of year this is for husbands. I mean, we can, we need some sympathy. Because we can come up with a perfect gift in our mind. You know, a vacuum cleaner with all the trimmings on it, just to make your life easier. And if for some unknown reason it's not appreciated, then we spend the, the we know that all of the next year, all of 2019, will be spent in the doghouse. And so somehow we have to pick the right gift. Now, fortunately, I have a 19-year-old daughter. And she just gives me a nod or a shake if I'm going, and mostly it's shakes. But I've gotten a few nods, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. But it's difficult for husbands to get the right gift. So show us a little mercy, a little grace through the Christmas season. And I say that today because God, our Father, gave us a perfect gift. And for the husbands and wives, if you want to know how to give just the right gift, follow the pattern that God used. And this is in your outline that we're going to be following along here. This is how God chose for us the perfect gift. First of all, number one, of course, he chose the greatest gift imaginable, his son. He chose the greatest gift imaginable, his son. You know, many of you will know the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. He knew just what we need. He knew just what we need. And he gave that to us. There's a fellow named D.A. Carson, and he wrote a, I guess you'd call it poetic prose um, that you may have heard. And this is what he said. If our greatest need was economic, God would have sent an economist to us. If our greatest need was entertainment, God would have sent a comedian. If our greatest need was political stability, God would have sent a politician. If our greatest need was health, God would have sent a doctor. But God perceived that our greatest need involved our sin, our alienation from him, our profound rebellion, our death, and so he sent us a Savior. He knew just what we need. He knew that we need a Savior because we are sinners. We do things that we shouldn't do and we leave undone things that we should do. We are sinners. 
And because of that, we need to be saved. We need a Savior. And God sent His Son to be that for us. So He chose the greatest gift imaginable, and He wrapped the gift. He wrapped it in human flesh. Jesus, God incarnate, as we say, God in the flesh, He took on human flesh and became one of us and as you know he was born in a manger he was born in a stable literally in the side of a cliff the gift came wrapped as a human being one of my favorite hymns is away in a manger i love that hymn but it's got a problem to it because many people in our culture today They want to leave Jesus away in a manger (laughs) because he's safe there. He doesn't challenge us. He doesn't push us. But at this time of year when the Savior is born, we need to keep in mind that he does not remain a baby. He grew up and he became King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And as we saw in our series on Revelation, he's coming again. Yes, we can sing away in a manger, but let's not lose sight of who this small baby is and who he became. So God chose the greatest gift imaginable, his son. He wrapped him in human flesh, and then he offered the gift. He offered the gift to us. Paul wrote to Titus in in chapter 2, verse 11, for the gift of eternal salvation is now being offered to everyone. See what he says, the gift of eternal salvation is being offered. Now, when you're offered a gift, what do you have to do? What's the next step? Pardon? All right, I'm going to illustrate. I'm going to ask, Josh Robart, he's home from school. Come forward here. Now, I have a beautifully wrapped gift. Thank you, Yvette. She's a much better rapper than I. Come on up here. We know you're not shy. (laughs) And how's school going, by the way? Excellent, excellent. And you're at Acadia. Yes, what year are you in? Third year. So you got one more after this one. Excellent. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> now, I have this wonderful gift for him that I purchased late last night at John Katu. <laughs> and then got my wife to wrap. So it comes from my heart. <laughs> and I can offer it to him. But... If he does not, what does he have to do now? He has to accept it. It can be the most amazing gift in the world, which it is. But if he does not accept it, it does him no good. It's as though I hadn't offered him to to him at all. But, but, if he holds out his hands and accepts it, And it's edible, so keep it away from your dad. (laughs) It can be put (laughs) to wonderful use. Thank you very much. Let's give him a hand. And this is the point I'm presenting in in a humorous way, but it's a serious point. God has offered us the greatest gift imaginable, his son. Forgiveness, healing, life in abundance, purpose, meaning, joy. He's offered it all to us through His Son. But He's not going to force it on us. If Josh had said, no, you know, I'm not going to grab him in a headlock and force him to take the gift. God doesn't do that. He respects our autonomy. And when He offers it, we have to accept it. And what a wonderful way if you've never done this, to celebrate Christmas 
but to say, yes, you've been offering me this gift, and today, right here, right now, I'm accepting it. Come back to that in a few moments. So he offered us the gift, and what is our part? If you're following along in your outlines, we have to receive the gift. Number two, it's good to appreciate the gift. Did you appreciate the gift? Thank you. I knew you did. That's why I picked you. I knew you would. Now, you may receive some gifts this year that you don't appreciate so much. It happens. And so I want to give you, these are some actual lines that have been used by people when they've received gifts that they either don't know what they are or they don't appreciate. These are the, this is like uh, David Letterman's top ten, except it's the top eight. This is how you can respond to a gift that you're, you're kind of iffy on. These are what people have actually said. Number eight. Well, well, well. That is a gift. <laughs> Number seven. No, no, really. I didn't know there was such a thing as a Chia Pet tie. And oh, wow, it's a clip-on, too. <laughs> Number six. You know, it's amazing. I've always wanted one of those. Now, jog my memory. What's it called again? <laughs> Number five. You know what? I've got just the place in my house that I'm going to put that. <laughs> Number four, boy, you don't see craftsmanship like that every day. <laughs> Number three, my, it's such an interesting color too. <laughs> Number two, you said that was the last one? Man, I'm glad you snapped that baby up. <laughs> And the number one thing to say about a gift that you don't like, yes, I can honestly say, I've never received a gift like that before in my life. Now that's what you can say when you get a gift that you don't appreciate too much. The wonderful gift that God has given us is we will appreciate it. You know what? I've been alive for over 50 years. I've been in pastoral ministry for over 20 years. I've never encountered a single person who has ever said to me, Richard, I let Jesus Christ into my life, and I wish I hadn't. I regret it. I wish I could go back and take it back again. That doesn't mean their lives have been easy doesn't mean they haven't had difficulties and challenges. And there may be people out there like that. But I've never encountered a single person who has ever said to me, it was not the best decision of my life. When we allow Jesus Christ, when we accept the gift and we allow him to become a part of our lives, he transforms us from the inside out. And he gives us his peace, his joy, his purpose, his love, his forgiveness. He pours it out upon us. And I can honestly tell you that my life has never been the same since that day that I made that decision to do that. And the easiest way this Christmas to show your appreciation, that's number two, by the way, appreciate the gift, is to simply say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. You may have said it a thousand times. It never gets old. It never gets old. And a second thing you can do, and this is the last point on the outline, is have you ever, some of you who have been in businesses, or sometimes our church does this in different little groups, you do a gift exchange. You know what those are, right? You, you come and you bring a gift with you, and then you, you through some kind of rules, you pass them around to each other, and uh, you leave with a different gift. It's called a, a gift exchange. And you can do that with God 
this Christmas. You can receive the gift of Jesus Christ into your life. And then you can give him a gift too. In fact, you can give him three gifts. I'm not going to go into detail on these because we'll be doing it again another time. But they're the three T's. The three T's that you can give to God as your thank you is your time, your time. Be involved in a ministry, whether it's through the church or outside the church. Be involved in a ministry that reaches out to others. Give him your most precious thing you have, your time. The second T is your talents. You can say the gifts that he's given to you. You've got gifts, you've got talents, you've got things you do well. Don't just use those for yourself. Use them for the Lord. Use them for the church. We're going to be having worship impact come on New Year's Eve. These are people with the gift of music. And they're not hoarding this gift to themselves, but on New Year's Eve, they're sharing it with all of us. Come tonight to the Blue Christmas service. And put your arms around those who are struggling this season. Give them your time, your talents. And number three, we talk about it this time of year particularly, your treasures. Your treasures. The ministries of the church go on because of your giving. And uh, I've, I've, I've heard scholars, pastors say that you know the Christian faith has really hit home in a person's life when it's moved from their head to their heart to their back pocket where their wallet is. That's what shows when a person is truly committed. So we have, we've received the greatest gift imaginable. The gift of Jesus Christ. And we can say thank you through giving him our time, our talents, and our treasures. I want to give you a chance. If you have never accepted this gift into your life, I want to give you a chance to simply, in a very uh, low-key way, to allow Jesus Christ to come into your life, to accept this gift, just like Josh accepted the gift, to give you a chance to accept this gift. If you'd like to, I invite all of you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'll be saying a prayer out loud. You can say it in your hearts. Lord Jesus... We know that God sent you, your Father sent you into this world to be our our Savior. We've been offered the greatest gift imaginable. And right here, right now, I accept this gift. I accept you into my life. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me from all the things I've ever done that have displeased you. Remove them from me as far as the east is from the west. And give me a brand new life through your Holy Spirit. I accept this gift. And in return, I give my life to you. My time, my talents, my treasures. I give everything I have and everything I am to you. In your name I pray. Amen. Let me just say... If you said that prayer today, before you leave today, do one more thing. Let one of the pastors or a mature Christian friend know of that decision you made because we want to encourage you in your growth as a new follower of Jesus Christ. We want to show you and encourage you to to continue to grow in your faith. So let one of the pastors know, Sandy or myself or John Ferguson, or a mature Christian friend, uh, let them know so that we can pray for you and that we can encourage you. This is Jeff. And this is Aaron. Hi. Hi. When Jeff and Aaron were eight years old, they received their most favorite gift ever. Jeff received a rescue doll, Dan. Best gift ever. Awesome. You are awesome, man. Be my buddy forever, would you? (laughs) And Erin received Jesus as her Savior. I love Jesus. 
Jeff had endless fun playing with his rescue toy, Dan, and Aaron spent a lot of time reading the Bible and praying and getting to know her Savior. We're like this. <laughs> oh, Dan and I are like this too. I mean, say so if you would talk. <laughs> When Erin was 11 years old, Jesus helped her transition to middle school. It was tough, but Jesus helped me through it. And Rescue Dan, well, he transitioned, too, from the toy shelf to the closet. Yeah, sorry, sorry Dan. Um, my friends are coming over, and uh, they don't play with toys. So. Yeah. And when Erin was 18... Jesus helped her move from high school to college. Jesus helped me find out who I'm supposed to be and how he wanted me to serve others. And Jeff went to college too, but Dan went down to the basement. Oh, that's where you went. I was wondering. Jeff, have you decided on a career yet? What, do you like my mom? It's not like I've been in the basement for living there for the past 25 <laughs> years. It's only been 20. Hmm. And four years later, when Erin was graduating college, Jesus was there with her and helped her transition to the real world out on her own. Jesus and I have been through a lot, and I know that he'll be with me through even more. And today, Jeff, well... Jeff went back to his home in the summer and had to clean out the basement and was reunited with his pal, Rescue Dan, but he sold Rescue Dan on eBay. Don't look at me like that, man. Don't look at me like that. I mean, Mom, she started wanting rent. I needed the money, man. Don't stop. <laughs> Both... Aaron and Jeff received the great gifts over Christmas. Jeff had a chance to play with his toy, but that was short-lived. And, well, Aaron, her gift lasted for a long time, and it changed her life. We may not all get the gift of our dream this Christmas, but we've all received the gift of a lifetime when God sent his son.